Hi, and welcome to a video about JavaFX and how to use JavaFX in IntelliJ. Uh, and a very easy way you can set up JavaFX is in, in IntelliJ if you use the Bellsoft JDK. So I'm going to show you first off what is the Bellsoft JDK, how can we use it with IntelliJ, and then I have a big bonus at the end on how to create your own template so that you can get started uh, very easily next time you need to set up a new project. So first off I opened up IntelliJ here, I'm going to use that later, but now let's try to look at what is a Bellsoft JDK. So if we go to the Bellsoft JDK uh, webpage we can see that they have this uh, cool graphics here with some VMware and some Spring, uh, which are some uh, very popular Java add-on. Uh, the current version is version 17, working with uh, JDK 17. Uh, if we look a bit uh, further in here, uh, how to reduce your TCO here. What we can see here is that it has one runtime for all Java workloads. One of the cool things, it has the uh, uh, JDK, it has uh, Java 6, it has Web Start, and it also has the JavaFX uh, part, which is normally not part of the JDK, but when you use the Bellsoft one, it's actually uh, incorporated into this version of the JDK. So this way it's going to be a lot easier for us to get things up and running with JavaFX because we don't need to import the JavaFX library, we don't need to use anything like we don't need to use Maven or maybe using modules and stuff like that. So let me show you how easy it is. So how can we use it with IntelliJ? So when I open up IntelliJ you can see here um, I'm on version 2021.2.2 and when I say new project I can create a new project here. Normally what we would do in the newest version here in this version I'm using now is using OpenJDK version 17 for example and then we can set up different things like name and location. We can set up if we want to use Java or Kotlin or Groovy language. Uh, Maven or Gradle for building. We can set up test frameworks and uh, the group that it's in by default. So when we want to use the Bellsoft JDK, uh, we go up here instead and just choose the normal Java version here. So we can see here, for example, um, there are some other libraries, frameworks. We can we don't need those. Uh, here it says Project SDK, so instead of using OpenJDK 17, we can go easily for this one called Download JDK, and then instead of using the Oracle OpenJDK or anything like that, we can just click the Bellsoft Liberica JDK 17, that's the web page I just looked at, and it will put it here on my user JDK like that. You can say take the version here as well. We'll use the newest version right now, which is version 17. And I'll click download and it's that easy. So it not, it automatically downloads and installs the JDK. It takes a second or two, um, unpacks it, and then we are ready to go. So now that we have that JDK, we go next and we can create a project from template. I'm going to start completely over. so. I'm just going to click next because we're only going to get a uh, command command line app anyway, as you can see here. Uh, we want a, a, op, um, a JavaFX application. So my JavaFX, we call it the uh, project my JavaFX, and I'll just click finish. So now it's setting everything up and. Um, it does take some time just for it. You see it says indexing uh, JDK here, so you kind of have to wait for that in order for everything to kick in, but you can start programming. But if you don't wait for this, you might get some errors until this is done because it needs to index everything for for this uh, JDK. Okay, so let's try to create a simple JavaFX application first. So I'll go under source and I'll say new 
and then Java class and I'll go for some name let me just call it main to say this is my main class and zoom in a bit so it's easier to see ah like that and first off we need to create public static void main as always when we create Java application this is the starting point and we also need the string array uh, that we need to use for the arguments. This is uh, the starting point for the application. When we want to use the JavaFX uh, framework, we need to extend um, the application. So we say extend application, and we can see here this is JavaFX application. I double click and it automatically goes for the import here. Then I get an error message because application uh, I need to override the start method of application because it's abstract uh, in other words I cannot use the application without having a start method and IntelliJ can easily create that for me so I'll just go here like uh, implement methods and I see there's the start method I'll just click OK and it puts everything here so this is where the starting point for the JavaFX application is so in order to start a JavaFX application, we need first to go, of course, into our main method and get everything started. And there is a launch method for that. Um, you can just write a launch, but I like to write application launch so that it's very easy to see that we are actually launching the application from our main method here. So it's coming from an application, there's no magic, magic, it doesn't have anything to do with Java or anything like that. It's, it's something that comes from the application here. So now that we have that, I would like to create a JavaFX application, in this case with an FXML file so that we can um, actually see something. And I don't want to do it programmatically because I think it's better by default to use the fxml file for that. So let me just introduce a package first. I'll just write here package uh, dk something like that and then java hands-on or whatever and then we can yeah Let's do it like this and then I'll just tell it to move that package here so that it goes in the correct uh, directory and everything here. Yes, and of course we need the semicolon as well. So that's it. So I wanted to do that first. So then I want to create um, an FXML file. But I don't want the FXML file to be part of my source because it's really not a uh, source in the same sense as everything else. I want it to be inside of a folder over here called uh, resources. This is the normal structure to use in IntelliJ for the resources and it makes it easy for us to reference it here. Let me show you. So I'll just uh, right click here and then new and then directory. They call it directory instead of folder I can see. And then the directory I'll just call it resources. You can really call it anything you saw I, I even misspelled it so let me just um, let me just try to rename that if I can do that let's see huh. I didn't see where to do that ah doesn't matter right now so uh, the important thing is that you go in here and then say mark directory as resources root this way, uh, IntelliJ knows to use this one, even though I misspelled it. So that's it. Now I think I remember I have to go under refactor in order to rename it. Yes. So resources. No, that's correct. OK. So under this resources, I'm going to create a new FXML file here. Click FXML file and I'm going to call it a, like main window and click OK and it automatically creates uh, the main window here. So I want that main window it also needs a controller so let's try to uh, 
create the controller first. So let's say we want it in DK Java hands-on and then call it something like uh, main controller. So in IntelliJ we can just create this class. It will give us an uh, error message and we can say I uh, just hovering and doing create class main controller and then it creates the main controller uh, directly in here. So now we have the controller up and running and we have this uh, part here. Next thing we need to do is in the start method we need to take the stage which, which is really our window and we need to put a scene onto that stage and that scene we need to create that from the fxml file under our resources. So it sounds a bit complicated but it's, it's okay. So we use the fxml loader class for that so I say fxml loader and I'll just call it loader equals new fxml loader uh, like that and then we can in here um, we can put the name of the file we want to load because it's in our resources folder uh, IntelliJ automatically makes it available just by using the slash and then main window uh, fxml that should be enough to uh, load that. Um, we can't just put it as a string, it needs it to be a resource, so we can use the get class and then get resource to do that, like that. So it needs a resource and we need to wrap it like that, get the class and get the resource. So now that we have the loader, we need to load the uh, fxml file. What we get from that is something called parent. Uh, which is a JavaFX scene. So let's see a parent. I'll call it root and then I'll just say loader dot load. This should load the file into this uh, root here so that we can use that for setting the scene. So I'm going to say primary stage dot set uh, scene and then I'm just going to put the root scene here like that. Um, yeah. Required scene. Okay, parent. Yeah. Of course, I need new scene and then parent like that. Expression. Oh, <laughs> must be a bit tired today. Sorry. So. That's it. So now I put the root here, I create the new scene, use the root, and the reason why I call this root is because if you look in the fxml file, the anchor pane is the root. So what we are really loading here is the anchor pane as a root of the scene, so that the scene will traverse the anchor pane and everything under that to actually create the scene, and then we set that scene on the primary stage. And the last thing we need to do for this to work is just to show the primary window or the primary stage as, as it's called in JavaFX. So now our application should be ready to run. Because we use the, uh, the this cool uh, Bellsoft um, JDK, we don't need uh, to do anything else than this. The only thing you can see is that we need to add a configuration over here. Um, we can automatically do that by right-clicking main, which is our main method, and then going for run main, and it will automatically create that configuration and start the application. And then we should uh, build everything and everything should pop up like this. Right now the window's empty, so let's just try to put something uh, in into this window. But it looks like it's working like this. So if we go back into our main window here and then just put things like a label where we can write something and I also want to put a button here, something like this and this label I'm going to say that we want an FX ID for that label and just call it LBL 
and we need to set the uh, layout x which is the x location of that and I'll just set it to 200 and the layout y as well and also set this to 200 and we can put some text in here like hello something like that then we have the uh, button here sorry so we don't need an FX ID on that instead I want an action event and I can put the event here let's call it click BTN for clicking the button I'm putting the uh, y value to the same thing 200 and maybe I should put the layout X first not to confuse anyone ah it was actually X I wanted to be layout I'll put 100 pixels below so that the button will be below then we need to use this uh, click button here so I'll just click here and then create method so it will hop into the main controller and we'll have our click button here like that okay so if we run the program now we can see I have the button and I have the label here so let's go back to to this one here and um, right now the button doesn't say anything so I'll just put click me like that and run it again so that it doesn't just collapse to nothing so now I can click the button and we can see that when I click the button it should go for this method in our main controller so I wanted the FX ID because I wanted to reference the label so I can change the text of the label just to show like the simplest uh, application you could imagine so this label here I can create field here by just clicking create field and now we have the label here I don't like that IntelliJ makes them public I like to make them private instead because I don't think anyone else from the outside needs to be able to to use these and then we annotate it with the FXML annotation to show that it's okay for FXML um, to actually work with this or the uh, the Java FX framework but no one else should be allowed to do this by putting the FXML annotation and putting them private we're securing them from any other unwanted outside access which is something we normally do in Java so I think we should definitely do it in this case so now that I've done this I can put label set text and then write something like it's alive something like that and then hopefully when I click the button we should see the text it's alive here it seems to work if you don't want to mess around in the FXML you can do it in in scene builder I just want it's not a focus for this video so I just did it by hand to show what's going on so that's basically how easy it is to use the bells of JDK with IntelliJ you just download it create the project and everything the only problem is that this actually took some time it took me some time explaining all of this stuff uh, but other than that it also takes time if you need to go from scratch with, with all of this code each and every time you need a project so what if we wanted kind of this project to be our starting point so that's the last thing in this video that is the bonus information here so how can you create your own template for easy setup of new projects it's really easy so what we do is when we have the setup that we want and I want just a couple of changes before I do this I like to put the controller in its own package so I want it to be in in GUI like this so I'll just use I'll just move it into GUI and of course I need to change the main controller I need to change in here as well so it's under the GUI package and then it should be working again so now I have this uh, GUI thing and I have my main method and let's say this is the package structure I want so what I can do now is I can go up here uh, to the top under a file and then there is this um, thing here let me show you so you go up and 
take the one called uh, project new project setup sorry so when you go into the new project setup you can say um, save project as template that's as easy as it is so we can now it's called my Java FX basic Java FX with Bellsoft something like this and then I'll click OK so now it's actually created we can see that down here and there's a button here for managing we can see I have only one so when we go up here and say file and then new project now we can actually it's not in here or anything we can go to user defined and we can see basic Java effects with Bellsoft so we can easily just click next now and then we'll give it a new name test delete something like this and I'll just click open that up in a new window and it's actually put everything as we wanted under the resource folder and everything just like before the only thing that we need to do now is we need to go for the configuration here we need to add a configuration in order for this to actually run so I just right click our uh, our main method here Ah, I, there were some changes because I choose another uh, package system here but if we go main and then right click and then run then we can see that uh, everything is set up like before so now we have a basic template for each and every time we want to start up a new project very easy and very nice thank you for uh, watching